Some, something I wanted to cover, something I, I wanted to help people have an understanding of. Because um, in the way that we, we're abusive to ourselves, and this with words, or we allow other people's beliefs and societal pressures or to turn into judgment, it's emotionally painful. Um, we're abusive to other people. And, it, and essentially, it's much in the way that we, we become abusive, we become the perpetrator out of a hurt, out of abuse. Okay? And this is the wounded beast. This is the, the um, you know, like any animal, you have a dog and that dog is just happy and it's loving and that's just the way dogs are. But some dogs grow up to be mean. And what, what makes a dog mean is it's been mistreated. Okay? And it's been mistreated and it's been mistreated. It's not about... Okay? In the beginning, that dog is just loving. But if it gets hit, you know, at first it's confused. And then it's afraid of that person. And then in its mind, it's imagining all the time that it'll get hit. And it's imagining being hit out of memory without actually being hit anymore. And now it's not just afraid of that person. It's afraid of people. And it's shy. It goes through that stage. And some of that abuse is only like its memory replaying the past. And then that animal wants to protect it. It doesn't want to hurt anymore. And what does it do? It's going to bark. It's going to get angry. It's going to bite. And we say, that dog, oh, that's a mean dog. But that dog's nature isn't a mean nature. That dog's na nature is to love, okay, and be affectionate. But that dog's afraid to, okay? And it doesn't want to hurt so much, it's like, it's now angry. Okay? And that dog wants to be, gets to be rescued at a certain point and it has a new owner. And that new owner who's just loving and wants to heal it can get bit. Because that dog is reacting to something in the past. Not what's going on in present time, but is living in an emotional memory. Okay? And now you're healing the wounded beast. You're healing, and this in a way is what we're doing with ourselves. Okay, that was that exercise. Where is the pain? Where is the hurt? Where is it replaying in memory that I'm repeating the hurt that's not actually happening anymore? Well, where am I holding it that I haven't healed yet? Okay? This is part of the domestication. This is the painful wounds of domestication. That they can be so painful, there's anger. Okay, and sometimes that anger is at ourselves for our body letting us down, perhaps. Okay, we're not being strong enough. Or that's a criticism, even when it's like, it wasn't about us. Even, even you can just hear the story of pain and hurt, and the instinct is to go to anger and protect. Somebody else can go to anger to protect. Okay. Is that clear? That doesn't mean he's mean. Okay, but that's a natural instinct of protection. But when it's such a habit, it's looking, well, they're angry all the time. They're just an angry person. Like, no, they're probably a hurt person. Okay. And they aren't going to want to show you the hurt, and we aren't going to want to see our own hurt because it's weak and it's bad, and oh, by the way, that's where the hurt is. Let's avoid that. Let's be this instead. Okay? So the wounds here, the wounds are self-inflicted, society-inflicted, playground at school-inflicted. Okay? It's hell out there. 
strange as hell out there. Okay? And one of, the, one of the harshest places uh, is in relationships, men and women. It can be partner to partner, but I'll just use men and women so you can see one side or the other. Um, these, are, these are big wounds, and they have a long history of wound. Okay. Um, there's a long history of wound of men having hurt women. Okay? And it's rape, and it's physical abuse, and it's death. Okay? Uh, it's repression of their voice. It's an inequality in wages. Okay? It's disrespect and dismiss of what they have to say and how they think. Okay? It's only in the recent past we thought well, the gumption came up and there's enough momentum to give them the vote. Okay? This is a new thing. Okay? Um, and because they have equality in a lot of places, does not mean they have equality. And does not mean all the wounds have healed. Okay? And so that's been a, a kind of power that men have acted out towards women. And you could say men have mistreated women out of men's wounds. That mistreatment and abuse. Okay? And it's happened individually in our relationships with women. We get angry with our partner. Father to daughter creates that dynamic. And there's a collective dream of, of men and an energy of men that collectively a society can have an anger towards women. So as being part of that collective dream of men, okay, I want to say I'm sorry. Okay, I want to say I'm sorry for the hurt that men have imposed on you. I was talking to a woman and she was trying to get over a story of, you know, being mistreated and abused by another man. And, and she's like, I can't let go of the story. I can't let go of the story. And I had to tell her, it's like, because it's not a story. It really happened. You were really hurt by that man. And she began to cry. And what had happened was, I was acknowledging and I was acknowledging a real hurt and a real pain and I was allowing to say it was okay to have that hurt. It really hurt. And in that acknowledgement she could say, yeah, it really hurt. You know when she says, oh, it's a story I need to get rid of, it's like she wasn't really acknowledging the hurt. Like, ah, it really hurt. But in the acknowledgement, the, the, the honesty, the truth, we go, yeah, it really hurt. And it wasn't her that caused it, it was somebody else. And it happened to be, in that case, a man. Okay? And I'm sorry, and I think we can speak, I can speak through this. We're sorry about the real hurts. And we were acting without knowing any better. We were acting, and I say, through society and history, without having a conscious awareness of what we were doing, of the wounded beast and our hurt and our pushback, any more than a, you know, as evolved as we were, it's the best we could do. Okay? Yeah, it's kind of a dog mentality, but sometimes when we're emotional, we're like that instinctually protective of our own hurt. Okay? And out of it, I think women, and, and then I don't know, you'll have to tell me and I'll learn, have grown to fear men. Women talk about, women, women talk about what they want in relationship, what they want. They, one of the things is they want to feel safe. 
like, it's like, what is that? And as I explored this, like, you know what? Because underneath, there's a lot of men that are angry. There's still a lot of men walking around that have these wounds and are walking around with a meanness and anger and that quickness to react like a wounded dog. And so women have been a recipient many, many times of that anger. And even if they haven't been, I think something in their conscious awareness that tells them like, it could happen any time. Okay. And there's a fear that women have of us men. And I'd say, as it applies to most men, it's legit. The game afoot for, for all of us. You know, is, is men be more aware, okay? Taking responsibility, cleaning up our wounds, okay? So we can be what we want to be, <laughs> okay? And not afraid and not, you know, because our wounds perpetuate in anger, and that's not how we want to be. So, the, the endless infinity loop of this is that as we're angry and we mistreat women, whether it's with a sharp comment or they're left and abandoned or uh, physically abused, sexually abused, that hurt happens and now there's anger back. And women can't compete in the, the physical power way that we can. And they're left to be trying to have power in a different way, trying to protect themselves in a different way. And they have to be more tricky about it and how they get what they want from men but not upset them or, or, or manipulate them. Or, you know. And sometimes it's wit and sometimes it's a sharp jab verbally. Like, they can push them back. They can control a man with a sharp jab, verbal criticism, a judgment. And that hurts emotionally. And over time, now we have reason to be angry back. And then that hurts. And that comes back. And your anger, or whatever it is, to protect, or just wanting to protect yourself, right? comes back as an attack. Defense is an attack. And we feel hurt, and the way we hurt is like we push back. <clears throat> Try and make that pain go away. And it's hurt, attack. The attack causes hurt, attack back. Might be physical, might be verbal, might be avoidance. Different ways we hurt each other, consciously or unconsciously. And I can say from a man's point of view of that hurt, I don't know where it started for each woman or kind of collectively. I dream back and it's like, where did I start hurting? And I could, I don't know, see it as the way I was hurt by women personally or, or developed my emotional experience of that dynamic was, or, or I was seeing a collective dream at one point, but if you went back as a child, it was just love and being loved. My relationship was like growing up, like one year old, you know, just baby. It's love and being loved. That was the nature. 
But somewhere along the line was domestication, and domestication was no. Don't do that. Stop. But it came with a tone, it came with an emotion that was harsh. You know? I might have been playing with matches. Thank God she was telling me no, but like time and again, whatever I was doing, and I'm sure I was, you know, kids would be curious and playful and, and getting into stuff they should, you know, no business getting into and have to learn the rules. But from that source of love that say was my mom or caretaker, or, you know, to get a harsh thing was confusing. My memory of like the transition was like confusion. I'm just kind of this bubble of love and presence. But after a while, like, it pierced that bubble. And that no, that reprimand, whatever it was, pierced, and the emotion got through, and it hurt. That was probably more confusing. And then, once that channel of poison was there, it was easier to get through every time. And then the wound developed. So now any time, those words, that person, they could just send it right through. And like, ah, okay. Until I was like, I'm afraid to feel that. I'm not going to do what. Okay. And so I started just modifying my behavior because I didn't want that poison to come through that channel. And this wasn't just for me personally. This was like all kids. We all get that some kind of wound early on. This is how we're like, okay, now we're behaving because we're like, we don't want that hurt to come to the channel. The channel that used to only be love and acceptance and presence. But kids growing up, that's that wounding of the beast. That hurts. We want to play and we want to have fun. We're like, I want to play with my toys. I don't want to go to bed. Okay, I don't want to go to da 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 da. Nope, you have to go. Let's go. <sighs> Rebellion. But I want what I want. Yeah, we're kids. We're not in our own world. But the reaction to that. I hate you. I hate you. <laughs> you know? And maybe they, that emotion is in the long lines of hate. We have anger response. And we learn not to act it out. For a while, because that really got us in trouble. More poison would come through. So we held that emotion of anger and hate. Mom, dad, parent. And for for men, for boys, growing up, mom was the big principal domesticator. You know, she's the one that took away our toys. She's the one that made us just do this and do that. And I think some of our resentment or what have you towards women started at that age. And I don't know if it was just a mom or it was like, okay, towards women or what have you. That hurt began to want to come out towards women. I don't know. This is just the way I see as possibility. But that's the cycle for, for me and my process to let go of. Okay? To be honest about And say, whatever that was, I have to recapitulate and heal all the way back to that point. Okay? Because that heals my relationship, myself, my soul, my emotional body, my first relationship to a woman, and then I can go cleanly to all the relationships with women. That changes, to me, is the core, to change the, dr the dream between men and women, okay? And for men, that's part of our healing process for ourselves, okay? At that point, women have an opportunity to feel safe with us. And if they have that presence of a man that they can feel safe with, it doesn't mean they'll feel safe. They might still have their story. Okay? They might still have anger. They might still have hurt.
And then it's about being aware that that's not about us personally. That's just recirculating a dream and a history. Okay? Maybe, though, if we're safe and we're present and we're compassionate and understanding why they're in their story, they'll see that their story isn't true with us. Like, wow, I got this story about you. But you're not acting the way in my mind that I say you are. <laughs> okay? My story doesn't match you. You're really being kind and present and listening. But in my story, you're abandoning, leaving, and hurtful. <laughs> okay? And they get to see reality doesn't match your story. But that means that when they're coming out like they're hurt, with a jab, with a criticism, whatever is their, their emotions, we don't respond out of a wound. And maybe, women, you can clean up your half. Okay? And then when we're acting out of our emotion, out of a wound, we can go, wow, you are not at all the person in my story about you. <laughs> it's obviously my story. Thank you for not reacting to me. Thank you for not coming back at me with a wound. Thank you for doing the cleaning first so I could see this lie. I'm living. Okay. Now sometimes our partner might be clean, they might not be reacting, but we can project, oh, they're going to do this. Oh, that facial expression means this. That gesture means this. We can interpret, misinterpret out of a wound and picture them the way we thought they were in the past or the way somebody else was in the past to us. Right. And, oh, by the way, the temptation to go complain to someone else who would believe our victim story and reinforce it and say, yeah, they did this, they were mean, that's probably not helping this cleanup process. That's our tendency. You know, that victim hurt part of our health wants to run off, get support, and say, oh, yeah, she's this or he's that. How do we get supported without someone who's supporting us support our victim story, support our wounded story? That's not going to support our judgments about our partner. That doesn't help clean it up. But that's our... Temptation. We want support, we want connection. Find someone who gets support, gives support and connection, but doesn't support our stories that perpetuate wounds and judgments. It's a personal journey. It's a personal journey. It's an emotional journey. That's a personal commitment. It has a long history. It has societal momentum. And that makes it all the bigger and all the more worth changing. Because huh? then we have a real chance for partnership, for team, for being on the same side. Because really, in our integrity, men and women are on the same team. Part of one species. And what we can give and provide and get from each other is so worth it, as is obviously the case, because we keep trying. <laughs> Okay? In the midst of a lot of this drama and wound, we keep trying okay, to sort some of this stuff out. I'm like, let's go. Well, I know it could be good. Where is it? At times. 
because it satisfies us emotionally, in our soul, in our life, physically, at every level, spiritually. It's our nature to be with one another. What's in the way is some history and some wounds. And there's not really a good reason to have the history in the way of the present or wounds and lies in the way of our future and our, ha and our happiness. <coughs> 